For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used a skein and a half of Cairn 1 pound in Azure. As for tools, a 6mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. We're using 5 stitches for this project, and they will be as follows. Chain Slip stitch Single crochet Double crochet Treble crochet This tutorial is for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size and explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're first going to grab our category 4 yarn, make a slip knot. We're going to grab our 6mm hook and we're going to start off by making a chain that goes from your side to your other side. I now have my chain all finished up and I have a total of 18 inches or 46 centimeters. Now that we have our chain, we're going to have to do just a little bit of math so we can get our cabling all right. But the first thing that we're going to have to do is count out and see how many loops we have in our chain. Take your chain number, subtract 50 for the cable sequence, and take that number and find the nearest neighbor that's a whole number that's divisible by 3. From there, you can add or subtract chains so that it can be divided cleanly. And I will give you guys my numbers as an example. My original chain had a chain of 60. We subtracted 50 and ended up with 10. We need to see if it's divisible by 3. And 10 divided by 3 is 3.33, which doesn't work. But if you guys want to, you guys could just subtract 1. And 9 is divisible by 3. So if you want to, you could go that way by just subtracting a loop. Or in my case, I decided to add 2 to the 10 that I already had. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. And that is perfect. So this is going to be the amount of horizontal ribbing we'll have in between our cable sequence. And now that we have all of that math out of the way, we can finally get started on the pattern portion. So the first row that we're going to do is just going to be a really simple row of double crochets. All that is, is blocking off that last chain that we have. We're going to do a chain up of three that counts as a double crochet. We're going to prepare for a double crochet and then insert our hook into that loop that we blocked off with our thumb or the fourth loop from our hook with just one double crochet. And that's the first one. Let's do the next double crochet more slowly. We're going to prepare for a double crochet, insert our hook into that next available loop, yarn over, pull through. We should have three loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And this first row, go ahead and just go all the way down, putting one double crochet into every loop that we have in our chain. And then once when you get to the end, go ahead and grab your stitch markers because we're going to need to do some placement. This is what we should have once we have our first row of double crochets all finished up. I have already gone ahead and put in my stitch markers, so I'm just going to talk you guys through it. Now that we have our numbers, it should be pretty simple. But the first thing we're going to do is start on one end and whatever number that you guys ended with, remember mine was four, we're going to start off and take that number and then we're going to count out whatever that number is and insert your first stitch marker. Right after we have that first stitch marker, we're going to ignore the purple ones really quick. Right after you have your first stitch marker, we're going to start off by counting out 25. Once we have that, insert your next stitch marker. You're going to take the same number that you had, count that out, insert your next stitch marker, count out another 25, and then insert your last stitch marker. And then the last little chunk that you have should come out to the same number that you guys had once when you guys finished doing the math. And now we're going to focus on what we have within the 25 loops that we have marked off as well. And this is going to be the same for everyone. So what this is going to be is we're going to count out 5, place a stitch marker, count out 3, place another stitch marker, count out 9, stitch marker, 3, stitch marker, and then 5 should be the last chunk right before we reach our next stitch marker. And we should have however many sequences we need of those. I just have two of those right next to each other. And now that we have everything marked off and we talked about it, the next row we're going to go in with is going to be our row of back loop slip stitches and single crochets so that we can work our way back to this corner. And then once we get back over here, we're going to start doing our actual cabling detail. 
How we start off this row is we're going to do a chain up of one, flip our work, and then the amount of loops is going to be different for everyone, but for the first little chunk that we have right up until we get to our first stitch marker, we're going to be going in with back loop slip stitches. So all that is, is inserting our hook into this first back loop that we have. From here, we're going to yarn over, pull through everything on our hook, and we're going to do the next one together just one more time. Into this next loop, we're going to insert it into the back loop only, yarn over, pull through everything, and we're going to keep doing this until we get to our first stitch marker. And I just so happen to be at my first stitch marker already. So from the first stitch marker to the second, we're going to be doing just regular single crochets. Into this first loop that we have, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And we're going to do the next one together again, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And we're going to keep doing regular single crochets until we get to our stitch marker. And mine is coming up right about now. And from this second stitch marker to the third, we're going to be doing back loop slip stitches. We're basically just going to be alternating between back loop slip stitches to single crochets in between each of our stitch markers that we have going all the way down. And we're just going to do the next few together just so we can get the hang of it. This next chunk that we have is back loop slip stitches. So we're going to insert our hook into that back loop, yarn over, pull through everything into the next back loop, yarn over, pull through everything. And we have just one more right before we get to our stitch markers. So insert, pull through everything. And then this next chunk is regular single crochets. So we're going to go ahead and keep doing this, remembering to alternate between back loop slip stitches and single crochets in between our stitch markers. And then once we get to the end, I'll meet you guys back so that we can get started on our detail. We made it to the end with our row of back loop slip stitches and single crochets. If we take a look at our work this way, then we can definitely see what we were doing along this side, but it won't look as crazy once when we go in with the next row, I promise. But in order to start our next row, what we're going to do is start off by doing a chain up of three. We're going to flip our work and then we're going to do back loop double crochets up until we get to our first stitch marker. So this part's going to be a little bit different for everyone but a back loop double crochet is preparing for a double crochet. And then into this first loop that we have, we're gonna insert our hook in through that back loop, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. And that is our first back loop double crochet. Let's do the next one together, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and we are almost at our first stitch marker. Here we are, and now we're going to get started on our first cable detail. Getting started on our first cable, what we're going to do is do a front post treble into this next available loop that we have, but the loop, we're not going to be going in through the tops of it. We're actually going to be going in through this double crochet. So I've separated a little bit just so you guys can see where we're going into, but we're going to prepare for a treble. So all that is is a yarn over twice. And then into that next available double crochet post that we have in the previous row, we're actually going to be going in through the side of it and then coming out through the other side. So we're going to slide our hook in through the back and bring it through the other side. And then from here, we're going to treble crochet like normal. So we're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. And this is the first start for our first cable and pretty much the rest of this is going to be front post trebles as well so we're going to prepare for a treble and we are going to be going into the second double crochet that we have so we're skipping this first one right here we're going to leave this so that this can be our twist once when we come back to it so ignoring this we're going to go into this next double crochet with a front post treble pull through two pull through two pull through two then once we have that, we're going to be going into this next double crochet post with another front post treble. So yarn over twice into this next double crochet post, insert, pull through. Once we have that, we're going to yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. And at this point, we should have three front post trebles. The first one goes straight up and down. The second one, we are skipping one double crochet. And then we have this guy and this guy. Now that we have these three, we're going to go back with our fourth one back into that double crochet post that we skipped so that we can have our twist. 
So just like before, we're going to be yarning over twice. And then we're going to bring our hook back behind our work. It's going to feel a little awkward, but we got to do it. So we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. And then this is what we should have so far. So our first front post treble that goes straight up and down. This is basically kind of like a divider. And then we have our three front post trebles, but really that makes our twist. And then to close off this section, we're going to do another divider, which is just a front post treble that goes straight up and down. So we're going to prepare for a treble and then into this next double crochet post, we're going to be doing a front post treble. So we're going to insert, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. And this is our very first cable in our cable sequence. Once when we have that, from this stitch marker that we're at to the next stitch marker, we're going to be going in with back loop double crochet is kind of like how we started this off. So we're going to prepare for a double crochet and into this next back loop, we're going to be inserting our hook. We're going to yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. And we're going to keep doing that until we get to our next stitch marker. We have made our way over to the next stitch marker and this is going to be our big cable sequence. So this is going to be more front post trebles with some front post doubles, but we'll talk about that in a second. The first thing that we're going to do is prepare for a treble. So we're going to yarn over twice and then we're going to start off by skipping the first three loops that we have in this section. So we're going to skip this double crochet. There's one, two, three. And then into that fourth, we're going to be going in with a front post treble. So we're going to insert, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. And we should have this decent size gap right here, but we will be going back to fill that in in a second. But into the next two double crochet posts that we have, we're going to be going in with another front post treble. So we're going to yarn over twice insert behind that next double crochet post, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, and we have just one more, yarn over twice, behind that post, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. And then now that we have these three that are kind of at an angle, we're going to go back into these three double crochet posts that we skipped so that we have our twist for this bigger cable. So we're going to yarn over twice and then we're going to bring our hook back to this first double crochet post that we have. We're going to the one that's furthest away from us. We're going to insert. This is also going to feel extremely awkward. We're going to insert and then treble crochet like normal. Yarn over, pull through, pull through two, two, and two. And this is our first one. We're going to be going into the next two that we have in this little chunk as well. So yarn over twice into that second one that we skipped, insert, pull through, whoa, let's do that again, insert, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two, and we have just one more left to go into, and if it helps you guys to try and separate a little bit, go for it, it won't mess with the pattern at all, insert, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. And this is what we should have. It doesn't look like anything, which is fine. It will eventually. But to close off this section that we have, we're going to be doing three front post doubles. And we're doing doubles instead of the trebles just to even everything out because this did stretch quite a bit. So into these next double crochet posts, we're just going to be putting a front post double crochet into there. So from here, we're just going to yarn over once, insert into that next double crochet post, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and then same thing into the next two. Pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and one more. There we go. And then now this is what we should have in total. So our first smaller cable, back loop doubles, and then the beginning of our bigger cable. And then once we are here, we are back to doing our back loop double crochets. So let's get that started. We're going to do this until we get to the next stitch marker. 
And now we are going to close off this section with another one of these smaller cables. So all that is is a dividing cable. So we're going to prepare for trouble into this next double crochet post. We're going to go behind that next one, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. This is our first one and now we're going to start working on the twist. So we're going to yarn over twice, skip this first double crochet post, go into the next one with a front post treble. There's one and then go into the one that we have directly after that with another front post treble. Once we have that, we are going to prepare for a treble and then go back to that double crochet post that we have skipped. So in insert, pull through, pull through two, two and two. And then from here we have just one more dividing front post treble to do. So that one's just going to be straight up and down. We're going to prepare for a treble and then into this next front post double, do one front post treble just like that. And this is the first bit in our sequence that we have. Now that we have this first chunk of our cable sequence all finished up, we are going to repeat this on the other side that we have right here. So we are going to go through this just a little bit more quickly just to make sure that you guys got it. And then we can continue on with the pattern from there. So just to finish up the rest of this row, we are at our middle section, which is our back loop double crochets. So we're going to do that from stitch marker to stitch marker. Once when we have that, we're going to be going in with our smaller cable. So the first thing we're going to do is do our dividing cable. So we're going to prepare for our front post, insert into that next double crochet post that we have and do a front post treble. Once we have that, we're going to prepare for another front post treble, but we're going to be skipping the next double crochet post that we have going into the one right after that with a front post treble again. And we have one more front post treble to do into this next double crochet post. And right after this, we're going to be doing our twist. So prepare for a treble. We're going to bring our hook back to this double crochet post that we skipped with a regular front post treble. And we are nearly finished up with this first smaller cable. So the last thing that we have to do to close this off is do another dividing cable. So prepare for a treble into this next double. We're going to insert with a front post treble. And this is what we should have. Once we have that, we're going to be going in with our back loop double crochets from stitch marker to stitch marker. We're now at our bigger cable and the first thing we're going to do is prepare for a front post treble and then skip the next three double crochet posts that we have. So we're going to skip one, two, three into that fourth double crochet post. Insert your hook with a front post treble. Once we have that first one, we should have that decent size gap right here, but don't worry, we'll come back to that in a second. We're going to finish off this section first. We're going to prepare for another front post treble and go into that next double crochet post that we have. And we're going to do that just one more time. So yarn over twice and into the next double crochet post. Once we have these three front post double crochet that is at a slant, we're going to be preparing for another front post treble, but we're going to be going back into these three that we have skipped. So prepare for a treble and we're going to bring our hook behind our work right here to these three front posts, to these three double crochet posts that we skipped insert and then treble crochet like normal. There's our first one. We have two more double crochet posts to go into. So let's do that. Yarn over twice into that second one with a front post treble. And we have just one more left. So yarn over twice, bring our hook back, front post treble. And we should have this little itty bitty twist right here. And to close off this section, we're going to be going in with three front post double crochets just to even all this out. So 
So we're going to prepare for a double, go into that next post with one double, prepare into this next post with another double, and just one more like that. And then from here, we are actually almost done. We have a little chunk of back loop doubles to go into from stitch marker to stitch marker. And we have just two sections left. The second to last section, we're going to be going in with our smaller cable, which is this one, the one that has the dividers. And then the last chunk is going to be back loop double crochets. So let's do this next one together really quickly. We're going to prepare for a front post treble into this next double crochet post that we have. Insert with a front post treble. Now that we have this one that goes straight up and down, we're going to yarn over twice. Skip the next double crochet post and go into the second one with a front post treble. We're going to do that one more time into the next loop. Now that we have these two slanted front post trebles, we're going to yarn over twice and move our hook back down to the one that we skipped and do one front post treble into there. And for this sequence, we have just one more front post treble to go into to match this one over here. It is a divider. So prepare for a front post treble, insert into this next double crochet post with a front post treble. And now that we have that from this stitch marker down to where we are done, we don't have any more loops left to go into, go in with back loop double crochets. Now we've just made it all the way down with our first row of our double crochet row, and I'm using air quotes because it's double crochets and front post trebles and front post doubles. But once when we make it here, in between each of our double crochet rows, we're going to be going in with our row of back loop slip stitch to single crochet rows and that's going to be exactly the same way that we did it the first time so I'm just going to talk you guys through it really quickly. To work our way up to the next row we're going to do a chain up of one, flip our work and we're always going to start off with doing back loop slip stitches and we're going to do that until we reach our first stitch marker and then from that stitch marker to the next we're going to go in with just regular single crochets and then back loop slips single crochets and we're going to keep alternating like that all the way down. We just made our way down with our row of back loop slip stitches and single crochets and this next row is going to be another double crochet row but this is going to be a double crochet row that goes in between this big cable that we have so we're not going to be doing any twists into the big cable but we are going to be maintaining the smaller one right here so let's just get into it just so you guys can get a feel of what we're doing. We're going to be doing a chain up of three that counts as a double crochet flip our work and from where we're at to the first stitch marker do back loop double crochets. We made it to our first cable section and this is going to be exactly the same. We're just going to do this one more time because these will always be here, always maintain the same thing. So we're just going to do this one more time just as a quick refresher. We're going to prepare for a treble into this front post treble that we have. We're going to be doing one front post treble into there. That one's just going to go straight up and down like our divider. Prepare for a, another front post treble. We're going to be skipping this first front post treble that we have and then going into the second one. And the second one may be a little tricky to go into, so you might want to separate it with your fingers if you need to. Go ahead and do a front post treble into there. And then from there, prepare for another front post treble and then go into the next one that we have just like that. And now we have a straight up and down. We've skipped one and then two that's slanted. Once we have that, we're going to prepare for another front post treble and then go back to the one that we've skipped with a regular front post treble, just like that. And then to close this guy off, we have a regular divider. So yarn over twice into that next front post treble, pull through, pull through, pull through. And this will be the same no matter what side you're on over here on the other side of the cable or in our next sequence, we will always be maintaining the smaller cable stitches. But now that we have that information, we're going to do back loop double crochets into this next chunk that we have from stitch marker to stitch marker. So basically anytime that you guys see a back loop double crochet, that's going to stay a back loop double crochet. So Typically, this first chunk will remain the same.
Now in this row, the only difference is going to be where we did our big cable. And this is gonna look a little crazy first. We're, we'll see where it's gonna go in a few rows. But for this section, all we're gonna do is go in with front post treble crochets once into every front post treble that we have, slash front post double. So we're going to prepare for a front post treble. And then this first little bit, we're gonna to have to be going into these front post trebles that's behind this twist that we have. So we're gonna to have to kind of find it. But we're gonna insert with one front post treble into the first one, prepare for another front post treble into the next one. And then this next one is actually gonna be pretty tricky to find because it's pretty hidden, but we just have to separate our work and go into there with all front post trebles. And as you can see, it kind of brings it out just a little bit. Now we're gonna be working into these guys. So another front post treble once into each of these front posts. And we are almost finished like that. Now that we got the complicated part out of the way, now we just have these front post doubles to go into to close off this thicker cable stitch section. So that's gonna be the same. All front post trebles going across our thicker cable stitch. And this is what we should have once when we have gone all the way around. And this doesn't look like anything at all actually, but this next, but this row that we just did is actually really important because it helps bring our work up. And if we do end up forgetting this row, then our work would look a lot smaller and a lot more cramped. But now that we have this, we're actually just going to maintain this sequence that we already have. So the next chunk is going to be back loop doubles. And then we have our small cable, which I just showed you guys how to do back loop doubles, and then another small cable, back loop doubles, and then once we get to this big chunk of our thicker cable, we're gonna do more front post trebles, and then maintain the rest all the way until we get to the end. And then once we get to the end, we're gonna chain up one, do back loop slip stitches, single, back loop stitch, single, and keep doing that all the way down. Once we get down to the other end, I'll meet you guys back so that we can continue on doing this thicker cable pattern. So we just finished that row that we did together and then we also made our way back with our row of back loose slip stitches and single crochets and we are now here. So from here, like I said before, we are going to maintain our back loop double crochets wherever we see a back loop double crochet and then also maintain our smaller cable wherever we see this. So from here up until here, we're going to do the same thing. So back loop double crochets our small cable, back loop double crochets, and then we're gonna meet back at our thicker cable so that we can continue on with this pattern. So go ahead and do the first little chunk that we have and then I'll meet you guys back. We're now at our thicker cable sequence and now we're going to start off this next twist or crossover that's gonna happen. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to take a look at these next front posts that we have and we're going to be doing three front post double crochets into these next three loops that we have. So we're just going to yarn over once, insert into this next front post with a front post double crochet. There's one, there's two, and then here is three. And then this next part is going to be like how we started off this portion in the two previous rows before this. Yeah. So we're going to prepare for a treble. We're going to skip the next three front posts that we have and then go into that fourth one with one front post treble. So there is one. And then into the next two, we're going to be doing a front post treble into each of those as well. So prepare, insert, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. And one more, yarn over twice, insert, pull through two, 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 and two. And then now that we have this, we have a pretty decent sized gap right here. So we're gonna be going back into these posts with more front post troubles. So we're going to yarn over twice, bring our hook back into the section that we skipped. We should have three available posts to go into. So we're gonna go into the one that's furthest away from our hook or the first one insert, pull through, pull through two, 
pull through two and pull through two. We're going to be doing this two more times into the next two posts. So yarn over twice into the next one, pull through, pull through two, two and two. We have just one more to do. So let's yarn over twice and then go into this last one. And this is what we should have. It looks a little nuts, but as you guys can see, it's starting to pull into this direction. And then this portion is going to start to wind up and we're going to have another one that starts up and that's going to wind up up and around it as well. And that is going to be the pattern for this. We still have a couple more rows to do. So I'll meet you guys back so that we can finish off this pattern together. But I just wanted to show you guys what it's starting to look like. And then also really quickly, it may be a little confusing because I know that I was confused, but we do some front post doubles instead of some front post trebles, whereas with other ones, it's just all front post trebles. But the only difference is that when we do our front post doubles, those are going to be the ones that's just going straight up and down, like how we did here and how we did here. But for all the ones that are going to be slanted or twisted, those are going to be front post trebles. But now that we have all of that out of the way, we are going to continue doing the rest of the work that we have. So back loop doubles, our small cable, back loop doubles, small cable, back loop doubles. We're going to do the same sequence that we just did a second ago for this other thicker cable. And then we're going to finish this off. Once we make it to the end, we're going to chain up one, do back loop slip stitches to singles, and then keep doing that all the way down until we reach this end and then we're going to start doing this row the same way that we started this one so back loop doubles maintain the small cable another section of back loop doubles and then once we get back to this thicker cable i'll meet you guys back so that we can continue on with this detail we've made our way all the way back around to our thicker cable section and as you guys can see just as a reminder we did maintain our front and just to show you guys, we did maintain our back loop double crochets, our small cable, back loop double crochets, and we are at our thicker cable. And this next section, since we just did a twist in the previous row, we are going to go in with a front post treble crochet just once into each of these posts that we have. So really quickly into this first post, we're going to yarn over twice and do a front post treble. We're just going to zoom through this really quickly because i know that you guys already know how to do this i just wanted to remind you guys that right after each of our twist rows for our thicker cable section we are going to have a row of regular straight up and down front post trebles no twists no nothing and this is what we should have once we have finished up doing our regular front post trebles and then from here we're going to do the same thing that we always do Go all the way down. Once we make it to the end, do a chain up of one, do back loop slip stitches to single crochets all the way down this. And then once we make it down to this end, maintain this back loop double crochet, small twist, back loop double crochet. And then I'll meet you guys back so that we can do the thicker net portion again together. Okay, so we are now back and this is what we have so far. I just wanted to show you guys how it's all coming together. It's looking pretty good. And I just wanted to talk to you guys about this thicker cable section that we have because I know that it can be just a little bit confusing. So taking a look at just this portion and we're not going to be talking about any of these single crochet to slip stitch rows. We're just going to be talking about the double crochet rows that we have. So far we should have five. And just to let you guys know, the first row is a row of regular double crochet. The next row is a row of twists. The row after that is the regular row of front post trebles, no twists, nothing fancy. And then the row after that, which is the fourth one, is a twist. And the fifth row, which is the most previous, and the fifth one, which is the previous row that we did, is a row of regular front post trebles. But now that we have this, we're going to be going in with our sixth double crochet row. And we are just about here. We're ready to go in. So let's start that off together. So this is where we're at. The next thing we're going to do is start off doing our next twist. So as you guys can see, we already have this portion that is coming up the front and we do need to start to fill out this back twist that will be here as well. So how we're going to do that is prepare for a front post treble. We're going to be skipping the first three loops that we have right here. And then we're going to be going into that fourth post 
with one front post treble. So here is one, and then into the next two, so in three in total into this section, we're gonna be doing two more. So prepare, insert, front post treble, there's two, and we have one more to go into. And then once we have that, we're going to be working our way back to this first set of three front posts with more front post trebles. So we're gonna yarn over twice into this first one that we skipped. We're gonna do one front post treble. So there's one, two, and three. Once we have that, we're going to go into these next posts that we have with regular front post double crochets. So we're gonna prepare for a double crochet, insert into that front post with one double crochet. There is two, and then there is three. And this is what we should have, as you guys can see, it's starting to twist up this way, and we do have a little curve up this way now as well. And we've just finished up doing our last section of our front post trebles, and this is the sequence that we will be doing for our thicker cable. So if you guys need to reference anything, I will have a timestamp in the description to show you guys how to get to the first one all the way up to here. And then that's basically it. We're going to continue doing this pattern while maintaining everything, everything. So let's take a look at this really quick. We're just taking a look at this section right here because it's the same thing over here, but just so that we can see it a little bit better. But like I said, we're gonna be maintaining everything the same. Our back loop double crochets and our smaller cable back loop double crochets, and then whatever row we have for our thicker cable. And then we're gonna keep doing this all the way down once when we get to the end. We will be doing a chain up one and then working our way back with our back loop slip stitches and single crochet row. And then from there, we're just going to continue doing all of this, going straight up until we reach right underneath our arm. So where our underarm starts so that we can start working on the armhole. If you guys have any questions, I know this was a lot, go ahead and leave a comment down below and keep an eye out for that timestamp as well in case if you guys need to rewatch this section. But I will meet you guys back once when we have a very large chunk of this finished up. We have just made it back with the bottom portion of the sweater that we have. I have now reached where I want to start doing my decreases right where the armholes are going to be. But just to let you guys know from where I ended all the way down to where we started, I have a total of 12 inches or 31 centimeters. And from there, we are going to start decreasing into every row that we have all the way up until we get to our shoulders but we will have a little thing a thing to do in the middle too, so we'll meet each other back for that as well. But the next thing we're gonna have to take into account is we are gonna want to end on this row of our back loop slips and singles so that we can start off our decrease rows with the double crochet row. And then once when we are here, we're ready to start decreasing. So let me just show you guys how to decrease on both ends and then we'll move on from there. So starting up our first decrease row, what we're going to do is start up by doing a chain up of three that counts as a double crochet. We're going to flip our work. We're going to prepare for a double crochet and then into these first two loops that we have, the back loops still, we are going to be doing a decrease. So into this first back loop, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, and then into this next back loop, insert, yarn over, pull through. We should have four loops on the hook. Once we have that, we're going to yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, pull through two and that is our decrease along this side. And then once when we're done with that, we're going to continue on with the pattern going all the way down this row until we have just three loops left in this row. Then we're gonna do a decrease into the third and second to last loop and then do a regular double crochet into that last back loop. But I'll meet you guys back once when we get down here so we can do that together. We've just made our way down to our last three loops that we have in this row, and we're going to be decreasing, like I said. So into the third and second to last, we're going to be doing a decrease. So we're going to prepare for a double crochet, insert our hook into this third to last back loop, yarn over, pull through, and then into the second to last back loop, yarn over, pull through, 
yarn over, pull through three, pull through two. And from there, we just have one loop less. So we're going to be going in with, we're going to take this out, a regular back loop double crochet. And then once we have that, we're going to do our row of back loop slips and singles. But we're going to start off with, or start and end with a decrease in these rows as well. So we're going to do our chain up of one. That's how we work our way up to the next row. And then since these are back loop slip stitches, we're going to do a back loop slip stitch decrease. So into this first back loop, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through into this next back loop, insert, and then from here we're going to yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. So really quickly we're just going to yarn over. Once when our hook is right about here, we're just going to pull it straight through. So pull it through one, two, three loops, just like that. And then from here, go ahead and continue doing the pattern like usual. So go from back loop slips to singles, back loop slips to singles, and then we are going to stop at the end and meet each other back so that we can do a decrease into the third and second to last loop and then do a regular back loop slip into that last. So I'll meet you guys back once we make our way to the end of this row. We are back and we have the last three loops of this back loop slip and single row left and we're going to do some decreases. So into the third and second to last loop we're going to do some slip stitch decreases. So we're going to insert our hook into that third to last back loop, yarn over, pull through, second to last and then from here it's the same deal that we have on the other side we're just going to yarn over and automatically pull through everything that's on our hook just like that and then we should have should just one more loop left insert your hook into that last back loop yarn over pull through and we have decreased into the double crochet row right before and then also into this row as well and since we're at this corner we're just going to start up our next row and decrease together just for the sake of it, we're going to do a chain up of three and we're going to be decreasing into the next two back loops that we have. So we're going to prepare, insert into the next back loop, yarn over, pull through, into the back loop after that, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, pull through two. And that is our decrease for this row. And we're going to maintain this row going all the way down, decreasing into the third and second to last loop and doing a back loop double crochet into the loop into the last loop that we have in this row and then we're going to work our way up to the next row which is our row of back loop slips and singles and then that row we will be decreasing on the ends as well so i will meet you guys back once we have this row and the next row of back loop slips and singles all finished up so that we can start working on the rest and also talk about once when we meet our first detail so i am back and we are now going to talk about doing decreases into our detail that we have so it's going to be just a little a little bit different but <laughs> really quickly i have finished up the previous row that we were just in went all the way down and then once we made it to the end we did a chain up of one decreased into those first few loops that we have with our back loop slip stitch and single crochet row and did the rest of the row all the way back and then decreased into these last loops as well and now we are here if you guys have just a few more left say if you guys have a bigger outer border i guess what we can call this then go ahead and keep going until you guys are just a few loops away from our detail but let me just show you guys what to do once when you do get here but in order to work our way up we're going to start off by doing a chain up of three that counts as a double crochet and in the beginning and at the end of every row we are going to want to maintain having either this chain up of three which counts as a double crochet or just a regular single double crochet at the very end like how we have where are we like how we have over here we're going to want to maintain these guys at the end so that it's easier to connect to the rest of the sweater so once when we get here the next one is going to be a back loop double crochet that is a decrease so we're going to prepare insert into this next back loop pull through into the next back loop pull through pull through three pull through two but that obviously cuts into our detail that we have for now but all we're going to do is take a look and see where we're at so obviously we cut into this decrease that we have in the previous row and then this first front post treble crochet so we're going to do everything else the same we're basically just going to erase the one that we went over so we're going to do the rest of this pattern just like if we have been doing it this entire time and then we're going to continue to do this all the way down once when we go back and forth enough to where we have to start decreasing into the front post trebles we'll meet each other back so that we can go into those together 
We have made our way all the way back down with our row of back loop slips and singles. And now we're going to start doing what I mentioned in the previous clip, which is where we decrease into our detail portion. So what we're going to do once we get all the way down here is do a chain up of three that is usual, that counts as a double crochet. And we are going to be doing a front post treble, but going into the next two front posts at the same time. So what we're going to do is prepare for a treble and then into these next two front posts that we have, we're going to insert our hook behind one and behind two, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, pull through two, pull through two. And that is our front post treble decrease. As you guys can see, it has closed these two up together. And then from here, we're going to continue on with the pattern exactly the same as how we did it. And it doesn't matter that we have taken away this front post. We're going to just skip that once when we get to it. So not looking at this guy, we're going into this portion like normal. So we're going to skip the first front post, go into the next one that we have, and then go into the front post that we have right after that. That was a double, not a treble. Let's redo that just like that. And then once when we are done with this one, we would have done a front post while going back into this first one that we actually skipped in the sequence, but we're not going to go into there since this one is already occupied with another front post. So we're going to ignore that altogether and then jump over to this guy with the rest of the pattern. So this one, we're going to have a couple that go straight up and we're going to eventually keep tapering upwards. So this will all kind of cut in at an angle. But once we have that, we're going to do the rest of our pattern going all the way back down. And then we're going to leave the last few loops for us to go into so that we can, so that we can decrease down this portion as well. Front posts. We've just made our way down and we have left the last three posts because we are pretty much done with going into these loops that we have up top for now. Obviously, if we keep decreasing over to these back loop double crochets, we'll have to decrease into those, but since we're not there yet, we're going to be decreasing into the third and second to last post and then putting one double crochet into this last back loop that we have right here. But let's do this together. This is our two posts that we're going to be going into. So we're going to be doing a front post treble crochet decrease. Yeah. So we're going to yarn over twice. We're going to insert our hook into that third to last post and then also underneath that second to last post and then do a front post treble crochet like usual and this is what we should have it should match the same thing that we have on the other side and once we have this we're going to prepare for a double and then always into that last back loop we're going to be going in with a double crochet and we are going to work our way back with our back loop slip stitch row so we're going to let's just show you guys do a chain up of one flip our work and then into this first back loop, yarn over, pull through into the next back loop, yarn over, pull through everything that's on the hook. And that is our decrease. And that is basically it for this section. Let's show you guys what it's looking like real quick. This is what we should have. We've done a couple of these decrease rows together. As you guys can see, it's starting to taper up just a little bit. Let's move this. It's starting to taper up a little bit. And we're going to continue tapering this up until this portion reaches about two inches or five centimeters below the base of our neck. And then from there, we're going to be working on the collar that we have. So go ahead and keep tapering all the way up. And then I'll meet you guys back to let you guys know my measurements and then what we have to do right after that. We are now all back with what we have for our underarm portion and we have stopped about two inches or five centimeters from the base of our neck and now we're going to start working on the crew neck section. But the first thing that we're going to have to do is talk about what we're going to do right over here. So what I did was found the middle point in the entire piece that I have and then from there I measured out a total of three and a half or nine centimeters so that we can start working on our shoulder chunks individually so that this can taper up towards our shoulder, this can taper up towards our shoulder, and then once we have this gap right here, we're gonna go in with a row of single crochet to smooth all of this out right here. 
And just to let you guys know the measurements from where I ended, from where we started, I have a total of 17 inches or 43 centimeters. And now that we have all of that said and done, we are going to continue doing the same thing. So we're going to continue going in with our decreases all the way until we get to our first stitch marker on this side. But we're going to stop three loops right before we get to our stitch marker because we're going to be doing a decrease into the third and second to last and then doing a double crochet into the last. So basically the same thing that we're doing along the edges, but now we're doing it along this side for our shoulder chunk. So I'm going to start this off, make my way over to this side, and then I'll meet you guys back so that we can do this part together. We started off our shoulder chunk. We've made our way all the way down, leaving three loops right before we got to our stitch marker. And this just so happens to be where our detail is. And this is going to be different for everyone, depending on how many loops you guys have in between all of your cables. But now that I'm here, I'm just going to show you guys what I'm going to do. You guys can adjust it to wherever you guys are. But since I'm here, I'm going to be doing a decrease into these next two front post trebles. So I'm going to prepare for a treble, decrease behind both of these, and pull through. The only tip that I have, no matter what part you're decreasing in, is that you're going to want to leave a double crochet into this last loop so that we don't have one of these big trebles to work into once we start working on the collar portion. But this is basically going to be the same thing that we've been doing for the entirety of our work going back and forth, but much smaller. But we're going to keep doing this all the way up until we get to our shoulders. But just in case if you guys make your way over to the thicker cable that we have right here, I will not be decreasing into those. So once when I have reached that, I'm going to make sure that I have one regular double crochet on either side of it. And then I'm just going to go straight up from there. So if that happens, I'll meet you guys back so that we can do that together. Otherwise, just keep going straight up until you guys don't need to anymore, and then I'll meet you guys back. We're now at the portion of our shoulder chunk along this side, because this side has a couple extra loops. I'm just going to show you guys this side, where we just have one decrease in the previous row. So like I said, once when we get to this thicker cable, we aren't going to do any decreases into here, but we do want to maintain having at least one double crochet along either side. So all this side is going to be is a chain up of three and then from here we're going to prepare for a front post treble and we're just going to go straight into our first front post treble that we have in our thicker cable and then we're going to maintain doing this all the way down and then once we get to the side we're going to do the same thing just make sure that we have one double crochet on the end and then from there we're just going to go straight up going back and forth until we need to stop so once we have this part all finished up, I'll meet you guys back so that we can start this one off together and then we'll move on from there. I've just finished up doing this little shoulder chunk that I have on one side and just to let you guys know from this first row all the way up until where I ended, I have a total of four inches or 10 centimeters and we're gonna do the exact same thing that we have over here on this side. The only tip that I have for you guys is that you guys are going to start along the inside portion of this top we would normally start on the outside because it's cleaner but we can't do that because we do have this pattern to maintain so just insert your hook into here and then do the decreases on this side also maintaining the decreases on the outside and then continue working your way up until you have the same length that we have on this side and then i'll meet you guys back yay okay we're all done with doing the front portion and we have cut and tied both of our little shoulder chunks that we made for ourselves and now we can start working on the back in the back you guys can be relieved we're not going to do any of this cabling on the back we're actually just going to go in with rows of our double crochet and then we're going to work our way back with just back loop slip stitches double crochet back loop slip stitches and the sizing is going to be exactly the same so whatever you guys have from one side to the next make that same measurement. And then we're gonna do the same height until we get to our underarm. Once we get to the same spot for our underarm where we started decreasing in the front, we're going to decrease in the back as well. And then the only, only difference that we're gonna have is that we're obviously not gonna have this cut out in the back. This is just gonna go straight up and be blunt. So I'm gonna get my back half started and I will remind you guys, once when I get to my underarm portion, I'm going to start decreasing there. I'll meet you guys back to do that. And then once when we get to the part where we have this, I'll meet you guys back to remind you guys again that we aren't gonna do this cutout. So I'll meet you guys back once we have a good portion of the back done. We have a really good portion of the back all finished up. 
all the way from the bottom to where we started doing our decreases on the side for our armholes. And I said that I was going to come back to remind you that we are going to do some decreases here. And that is the only reason why I'm here. So go ahead and do decreases in the beginning and the ends of every row. And then, like I said earlier as well, we will not be having this hole right here. So we're just going to keep going straight up until we have the same size of the entire front piece. And then I'll meet you guys back so that we can paste everything together and then do the rest of the stuff that we have to do. We are all finished up with doing our back panel. As you guys can see, I have this right next to the front panel. And if we want to just lay this over it completely, it should be exactly... Let's lay this nicely. Exactly the same. And now that we have this, we are ready to connect. And the way that we're going to connect it is from the bottom corner all the way up until where we started doing our decreases for the underarm on both sides. And then we're also going to be connecting the shoulders to the top of the back portion that we have right here as well. So let's rearrange this the way that we need it to be and then we can connect it together. So we're back and we are ready to attach everything that we have so far. And I'm going to show you guys how I did that. We're going to want to make sure that the outside part is going to be touching each other. So, so this is the back flap and this is the back of that. If we flip it over, our ribbing is along the side. And if we look at the other side, you can see our cabling along the side. We want to make sure that these two sides are touching. And then when we do that, we're just going to go into the row of single crochet from this corner all the way up until we started decreasing or till our armhole begins. And the next thing that we're going to be doing is going in with a row of single crochet just from the bottom corner loop all the way up until we started doing our decreases. And we're doing this so that once when we do connect the front piece to the back piece, it goes in a lot cleaner and also so that it doesn't pull so we don't have gaps right where it meets. So this part's going to be fairly simple. All we're going to do is insert our hook into this corner loop. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook. We're going to pull through and the only thing we're going to do is go in with two single crochets into each side double. So let's do this first one together into this first side double. We're going to put one single and two single. Let's do the next one together as well. So into this next side double, here is one single and two single. And like I said, we're going to keep doing this all the way up until we started doing our decreases. We're going to stop at the row right before that. So as an example, this is my first decrease row. We're going to stop right into this row. We're going to cut and tie and do the same thing for this other side. I've already done this one and then do the same thing for the front pieces as well. And then I'll meet you guys back so that we can combine everything together. We are all finished up with going in with our row of single crochets along the side of our piece. And this is the front panel, back panel, and we have the same for this other side. And the next thing we're going to do is connect the front panel to the back panel together so that it can all seam up. But right before we do that, we do need to flip our work inside out. So all I mean by that is make sure that our pretty sides are facing each other. But once when they are facing each other, we're just going to go in with a row of single crochet, making sure that we're going in through the front loop and the back, making sure that we're going in through the front panel and the back panel at the same time. So let's start that off together. We're first going to insert our hook into this corner piece and then into this next corner piece. We're going in through the front panel and the back panel. We're going to insert our hook onto our, we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook. Pull through both. We're going to chain up one to secure. And then from here into this front panel that we have, we're going to insert our hook in through the first available loop that we have in the front panel. And then the next available loop that we have in the back panel and single crochet. We're going to do the next one together just one more time. So into this next available loop in the front panel, next available loop in the back panel and single crochet. And we're going to keep doing this all the way down until we don't have any more loops left to go into. We're going to cut and tie that and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side and then we will connect the shoulder chunks that we have and then we can move on to the rest. So we are back. I've just finished up sewing up the sides and I did flip mine inside out oh, and I did make a sleep, but we're not going to look at this just yet. But I did flip mine inside out just so that we can see everything, what it's supposed to look like right now. And this is what it is. I obviously didn't do the shoulder portion for this side or the sleeve. We're going to be doing that in about two seconds. 
but this is what the front is looking like and it is looking pretty great if you ask me so we're going to get started on this left side and i'm going to flip mine inside out and then we can get started on the shoulder and then the sleeve so we're ready to do our shoulders and this is fairly simple what we're going to do is just take mm -hmm. this front portion align it with this back portion and then we're going to insert our hook into the front panel's corner and then also into the back panel's corner we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook and pull through and then we're going to go down with a row of single crochets making sure we're going in through the front panel and the back panel at the same time once we make it to the end we are going to cut and tie so let's just do the first one together super quickly into this first loop that we have we're going to insert our hook into the next loop that we have we'll insert our hook and then from there we will single crochet there we go and we're going to continue to do that all the way down until we don't have any more loops left on this front panel cut and tie and then from there we're going to start working on the armhole that we have now that we have our shoulder portion all connected what we're going to do next is go on with the row of single crochet around this entire armhole this is going to be a little bit different though so we're just going to start it off together really quickly we're going to insert our hook into any one of these loops it doesn't matter which one and then it doesn't matter what direction you go in either all i'm going to say is once we get to our first side double we're going to go in with two singles so there's one and there's two and then into this first side slip stitch row we're going to go in with one single crochet so there's that and then into this next side double we're going to do the typical two single crochet and then into this next side slip stitch row that we have we are going to skip it so we're going to be skipping every other side slip stitch row so we're going to jump over this and go into here with two single and now that we're at this next side slip we're going to do a single crochet in there as well and we're going to keep doing this all the way around until we get to the end and then we're going to cut and tie once we get there now that we've made it all the way around with our row of single crochet what we're going to do next is try this on at this point and we're going to want to measure from the bottom of our arm down to where we want the length of the sleeve to stop and mine is going to be a long sleeve but keeping in mind that we do have a cuff to make after that as well so i'm going to start off by making a chain that comes out to 16 inches or 41 centimeters so all that is is inserting our hook in through this first loop that we have right here next to the base insert and make a chain of whatever length you guys need now that we have our chain we're going to go back with a row of double crochets so we're going to block off that last chain that we just made with our thumb do a chain up of three that counts as a double crochet we're going to prepare for a double and then insert our hook into that loop that we blocked off from our hook or the fourth loop from our hook and then from there we're going to put one double crochet into every loop going back down our chain we just made our way down with our first row of double crochet for our sleeve and we are going to connect it into the base but right before we do that we're going to need to speak about two things one we're going to need to do an increase into this last loop since we are working our way up towards the shoulder so how we do that really quickly we already have one double crochet into that last loop so we're just going to do another one we're going to prepare for a double crochet and put one more into that same loop like that and then now that we have that we are going to connect it into the base but instead of going into the panel that's closest to us we're actually going to be working into the panel that's furthest away from us if your sweater is still flipped inside out if it's not then you guys are going to be working into the panel that's closest to you but we're doing that because we still have this double crochet back loop slip stitch detail that we're going to have but obviously if we see the back it doesn't look the same but we want this to all be on the same side so what i'm going to do is insert my hook into the second loop that we have from our base while working into this back loop so i'm going to count out one and here's two loops and into the back portion that we have we're going to insert with a slip ooh, with a slip stitch there we go just like that and then from there in order to keep this ribbing that we have we're going to slip stitch into the next available loop pull through and then into our back loop slip stitch rows we are not going to be doing an increase so we're just going to flip our work and go all the way down with back loop slip stitches and once we get to the end of that we're going to do a chain up of three work our way back with back loop double crochets we're going to increase into that last loop and then we're going to slip stitch into the second loop from our hook that's into the base and we're going to keep going back and forth like that until 
you reach our seam that we have right up here for our shoulder portion and then we're going to be working our way down but when we work our way down we're going to be doing decreases into the two loops that's closest to the base so i'll meet you guys back once we get right about here we've just finished up doing one half of our sleeve and this was our increase so we're up all the way to where our seam is for our shoulder and the next thing that we're going to do is do the same thing that we did here going down this way but instead of doing an increase we're going to be doing a decrease into the two loops that's closest to the base so i actually ended on a back loop slip stitch row so i'm going to do that and then i'm going to work my way back leaving the last two loops and then i'll show you guys how to decrease and then connect it into the base once when we get there so we just made our way down with our back loop double crochets and we have left the last two loops like i said right before we get to the base and we're just going to be doing a decrease into these last two loops and then we're going to slip stitch into the base like normal so let's do this decrease together really quickly we're going to yarn over insert our hook into the second to last back loop yarn over pull through and then into the last back loop pull through yarn over pull through three pull through two and that is our decrease and then once we make it here we're going to count up one two loops slip stitch into that second and then this next row that we're going to be doing is a back loop slip stitch row. So we're going to maintain the rest of this pattern. So we're going to do back loop slip stitches, back loop double crochets. But now since we're working our way down our sleeve, we're going to be doing decreases into the two loops that we have right before we get to the base. But that's basically it. We're going to keep doing this all the way down until we don't have any more loops left to go into. And then we're going to seam up everything together and then we can start working on the cuff. We're now back with the other half of our sleeve. As y'all can see, we don't have any more loops left to go into. So now we're just going to seam it up so that we can make our way to the end and then also start working on our cuff. So this is going to be exactly the same way that we've done pretty much everything else. We're just going to go through it together really quickly. We're going to insert our hook into the first available loop that we have in the front panel and then insert our hook into the next available loop that we have in the back panel and single crochet. And we're going to keep doing this all the way down. But when we get to the end, if you guys end on the outside portion which is not the base well i can't do that okay if you guys end on this side don't cut and tie because we can just go straight into doing the cuff from there but if you guys end on this side cut and tie and then reattach your yarn onto this end and i'll meet you guys back so that we can do the rest now that we've made our way over to the end we are going to start working on our cuff now but right before we start doing that we're going to need to go in with a row of single crochet along the entire thing so that it's easier for us to start doing our cuff. So that part's going to be fairly simple. All we're going to do is do a chain up of one. And then into each of these side double crochets, we're just going to be going in with two singles. So here is one single into this first side double. And here's two. We're not going to be doing anything into these slip stitch rows, so we're just going to skip over. Put two singles into this next side double and we're going to do one more into this next side double we're going to go in with one two single and we're going to keep doing this all the way around once we make it to the end we're going to slip stitch into that first loop that we have in this row but don't cut and tie because we can just go straight into doing our cuff from there we've made our way down with a row of single crochet going along the opening of our sleeve right here and we have slip stitched into this first loop so now what we're going to do is measure out and see how long we want our cuff to be. I'm going to make a chain that comes out to two and a half inches or seven centimeters, but this can be as long or as short as you guys want. But since we're here, I'm just going to go ahead and start off by making that chain. And once we have that chain, we're just going to have a bunch of rows of back loop slip stitches so that this can cinch in. And this is what the cuff will eventually look like. So let's get that started. We're first going to start off by blocking off that last chain that we did. We're going to do a chain up of one, insert our hook into that loop that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook. We're going to go in with a slip stitch and then from here we're just going to go in with one slip stitch into every loop that we have going back down our chain and then we are going to slip stitch into the base and do more but I'll meet you guys back once we have that done. We have our first row of slip stitches going all the way down our chain and like I said we're going to slip stitch into the base. So just into that next available loop that we have in our base we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. And now this row that we have just finished is now closed off and we need to work our way up to the next row so all that is is seeing the next available loop, slip stitching into there. From there we're going to flip our work 
and then do back loop slip stitches going back down the chain that we made. So we're going to insert our hook into this first back loop that we have, yarn over, pull through everything. Let's do the next one together. Insert into that back loop, yarn over, pull through everything. We're going to keep doing that all the way down once we make it to the end. We're going to chain up one, flip our work, and do more back loop slip stitches until we get to the base, and then we're going to connect into the base. Well, since we're at the end, I'm just going to show you guys how to start up the next row. We're just going to do a chain up of one, flip our work, and do more back loop slip stitches. But like I was saying, connect into the base, and then in order to work your way up to the next row, you're just going to slip stitch up the next loop and keep going back and forth like that until we don't have any more loops left to go into and then once when we have that we are going to meet each other back so that we can connect the rest of the cuff together we've made it to the end of our cuff with no loops left to go into and all we're going to do is go in with a row of single crocheting connecting the front panel to the back panel like how we've done everything else so far so we're just going to do the first one together so what we're going to do is insert our hook into the first available loop that we have in the front panel, which is this one, and then the next available loop that we have in the back panel. Once when our hook is successfully through both, we are going to single crochet. And we're going to keep doing this all the way down as we make it to this end. We're going to cut and tie. And then once when you guys have done this sleeve, I already have my second sleeve done, but you guys can do the same sequence that we just did over here on the other side. We are back, everything is fixed right side out. We have both of our sleeves done and we are almost done, we're so close. We just have a bottom border to do and then a little border to do around the neck once we're finished with the bottom border, but we're gonna get started with this side first. So the first thing we're gonna have to do before we get started is just go in with a row of single crochet going around the entirety of the bottom border before we get started. So that's gonna be pretty simple. We're not gonna do the whole thing together. All we're going to do is insert our hook into any one of these loops, it doesn't matter which one, and single crochet all the way around, just putting one single crochet into every loop. So I'm going to get started somewhere around here, but it doesn't matter where you guys get started, I'm just going to meet you guys here so that I can show you guys what to do once when we get to the seam right here. So I've just done a few single crochets all the way up until we got to our seam, and we have one double crochet loop right here and then we also have this loop that's right next to it that is taken over by this set of two single crochet when we're seaming everything up but there is still a loop above right here so what we're going to do is into this loop that actually has a double crochet we're just going to put a single crochet into that loop like normal but once we get into this last loop that we have right before we get into the seam we're going to be doing a decrease but this part's going to be a little funny because we're going to do a decrease of three, but there's not going to be any loop in the middle for us to go to. So we're just going to have to find one. So the first thing we're going to do is insert our hook into this last loop that we have on this side. We're going to yarn over, pull through, and then into this middle chunk that we have right here where the seam is. We're just going to have to find a loop, yarn over, pull through, and then we're going to go into the first loop that we have along the other side. So that one is right here. Insert your hook into there. We're going to yarn over, pull through that, and then we should have a total of four loops on our hook. Once when we have that, we're going to yarn over, pull through everything. And we're only doing it that way so that there's not a big gap right where our seam is. But we're going to do the same thing along the other side as well, but we're just going to go all the way around with a row of single crochets. Once we get to the end, slip stitch into this first loop that we made for ourselves, and then don't cut and tie because we can just go straight into the bottom border for there. Now that we just finished up doing our single crochet row around the entirety of the bottom, the next thing we're going to do is figure out how long we want our bottom border to be. But the way that we do the bottom border is going to be exactly the same way that we did the cuff. It's just a bunch of back loop slip stitches and then connecting into the base. So I'm going to start off by making a chain of the same length as my other cuff, which is two and a half inches or seven centimeters. I'm going to work my way back down with slip stitches and then keep going back and forth with back loop slip stitches until we don't have any more loops left to go into. Then I'll meet you guys back so that we can connect it all together. We've made our way all the way over to the other side of our bottom band. We don't have any more loops to go into and now we're just going to connect it. And connecting it is the same way that we've been connecting everything. So all we're going to do is insert our hook into both corners, yarn over, pull through everything. And then we're going to do the first one together. We're going to insert our hook and do the first available loop on 
the front panel and the next available loop that we have on the back panel and single crochet. And we're going to keep doing this all the way down. We've just finished up doing the bottom border that we have and one of the last things that we have to do is just go in with our neck hold, just go in with a row of single crochet going all the way around just to clean it up and that is super duper simple. Once we get here we're just going to insert our hook and then into each of these side double crochets you guys already know put two single crochets into there and then we're going to work our way all the way around once we make it to the end we're going to connect with a slip stitch go ahead and cut and tie. This is what we have once we have finished going around with a row of single crochet around the neck hole and now we are all finished. The last thing that you guys have to do is weave in all of your ends. Now that we've woven in our ends, this is our finished sweater. This sweater turned out incredible. The cabling looks amazing next to the horizontal ribbing and I can't wait to see how you guys remake this sweater. And if you guys do and post it to Instagram, please tag us at TCDDIY. And if you guys like this piece or any other piece on the channel, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It's right beneath the video. Let's YouTube and I know you're enjoying the videos and it goes a really long way with helping the channel grow and gain traction. But if you didn't like it, give this video a thumbs down, but be sure to leave me a comment letting me know why you didn't like it. Or if you have any questions, requests, or if y'all just want to say what's up, I usually reply pretty quick. If you love it, do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, it's right beneath the video. It'll let you know when there's a new video uploaded to the channel, gets you a bit more priority when it comes to requests, and it goes a long way with helping the channel grow so we can keep making all these great videos for you guys. If you're already subscribed, huge thanks to you guys, but please hit that notification bell to know when there's a new video uploaded for you right away. And please share with your crafty friends, cause every bit helps. Links to the yarn and the hooks will be in the description, and if you guys buy something using those links, that also goes towards helping out the channel. And lastly, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest links are down there as well, and as always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one.